All right. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good all the time. Shalom, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. We love you. Welcome once again to another time in the presence of God. Welcome to church in the house. Um, this is Jesus House, Silicon Valley. Uh, Jesus here with one. Welcome to another exciting time of Bible study in the presence of God. Um, if there is um, sound or movement around you, please, you can mute yourself um, so that we can come into the presence of God and enjoy the fellowship as we get ready for uh, our pastors, our leaders, and um, ministry team to come on. So I want to call on Brother Boris and he's going to lead us in opening prayer for about two, three minutes. Then Dr. Chica, the triumphant voices, will be getting ready to lead us in a moment of praise worship. All right, Brabor, it's over to you. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Daddy, for giving me this opportunity. Hallelujah. For that day again. The Lord Amen. is great. The Lord is mm. so we have been hearing of so many dead, but our God has been there for us. The prayers that we have been praying, they are not going in vain. I just want us to just bless God. If you can hear the sound of my voice, just say hallelujah. Just bless the name of our God. Just thank God for the grace life. Thank God for your family. Thank God for protection. Thank God. I just want you to say glory, glory, glory to the King of Kings. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord of Lords. Father, we thank you for another day. We thank you, Jesus, for your presence. We bless your holy name in the name of Jesus. While we are praying, I want us to just use this opportunity as we start the service and commit just commit a servant of the Most High God into the hands of the Lord. Just say, Father, may you increase in his anointing. Lord, may you empower him. Lord, may you strengthen him. It is not easy to do this, but the Lord has accorded our daddy the grace to carry on despite the challenges of nowadays with this pandemic that we are still able to move ahead. I just want us to just pray that, Father, may you encourage, may you give Bless the leaders. May you give them more inside of your word. May you fill them all. May you fill us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for strength. Thank you, Lord, for empowerment. Thank you, Father, for your presence in the name of Jesus. I want us to invite the presence of the Holy Ghost. Just, Lord, come and take for control in the name of Jesus. I want us to just invite the presence of the Holy Ghost. Sweet, gentle Holy Spirit, we invite thy presence, Lord. Father, amen. this could be whatever it is. But, Lord, my King, Distance is not a barrier. We pray for thy anointing, Lord. Let it flow. Lord, may you impact life today in the name of Jesus. Even the teaching of today, let be great transformation in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for the manifestation of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Father, we use this opportunity and we cry, Lord, unto you, Lord. In any way we have gone wrong against you, Father, please have mercy. Lord, clean us with your blood and make us new again. Father, have Amen. mercy in the name of Jesus. Lord, we commit the service into your holy hands. Father, come and put control. Holy Ghost, my lady, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we commit the service, Lord, into your holy hands. Father, move again. In Amen. Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Unchangeable God. Unchangeable God. Unchangeable God, unchangeable, 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 unchangeable God. You are unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unchangeable God. Unchangeable God, unchangeable, unchangeable, unchangeable God. God. You are 
because you're unchangeable and reliable God and you are great and you're greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. I'm gonna dance and praise him. It doesn't matter what comes my way. The greater one lives inside of me. His name is Jesus. I'm born a winner, more than victorious. I'm a hell of the kingdom, filled with the Holy Ghost. I rejoice in him. I rejoice in him. I rejoice in him. More than the color, I rejoice in him. I rejoice in him. I rejoice in him. More than the color, I'm gonna dance and praise him. It doesn't matter what comes my way. The greater one lives inside of me. His name is Jesus. I'm born a winner. More than victorious. I'm a head on the kingdom. Filled with the Holy Ghost, I'm gonna dance and praise Him. It doesn't matter what comes my way, the greater one lives inside of me. His name is Jesus. I'm born a winner, more than victorious. I'm a heavy kingdom filled with the Holy Ghost. I rejoice in Him. I rejoice in Him. I rejoice in Him more than the conqueror. I rejoice in Him. I rejoice in him. I rejoice in him. More than the conqueror, no weapon formed against me shall ever prosper. The greater one lives inside of me. His name is Jesus. I'm born a winner, more than victorious. I'm a hell of a kingdom, filled with the Holy Ghost. I rejoice in Him. I rejoice in Him. 
I rejoice in him. Morning, the counselor. I rejoice in him. I rejoice in him. I rejoice in him. Morning, the counselor. Cause I'm more than the conqueror, more than the conqueror, more than the conqueror, more than the conqueror, more than Victoria, more than Victoria, more than Victoria. Morning Victoria. Morning, I rejoice in him. I rejoice in him. I rejoice in him. Morning a conqueror. I rejoice in him. I rejoice in him. I rejoice in him. Morning, the conqueror. Rejoice in the Lord, regardless of whatever situation it is, whatever you're going through, rejoice in him. Let him know that you're going to rejoice in him always. I rejoice in him. I rejoice in him. I rejoice in him. More will rejoice in you, will rejoice in you, will rejoice in you, because we're more than I rejoice in him, I rejoice in him. I rejoice in him, born and a conqueror, and we bow down and worship Yahweh. Oh, we. And worship Yahweh. Oh, and Yahweh. Yahweh. Yahweh.
Lord, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Chica. God bless you. Uh, we bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Our God is such an awesome God. Thank God for another time in the presence of God. And, uh, uh, so tonight, uh, we, we want to thank God for every one of you who is on the line. I don't know if Bracky is there. Um, is Bracky on the line? Yes, sir. I'm right here. Yes. Okay. So, Bracky, um, we so I, I, uh, I'm gonna we are gonna bring you on, and you have about 20 minutes um to uh bring us to the end of the last week, and then after that, uh, Dr. Obina will be bringing us to lesson three. Um, so uh, so everybody get ready, and um, you know, we've been on this series on higher ground, developing a godly attitude. Uh, for uh, a godly developing a godly character for a higher altitude, and we've been having a series of teachings. So we started with um, uh, having what, what we can don't let me go that who can remind me what was the first lesson we learned. So quickly, I'm I'm taking three minutes out of Brackin's time. Who can quickly so let's respond on time and so that uh, we can bring our teacher on. So who can remind me what was the first lesson? What was our first lesson? Unmute yourself and, and speak to us, please. What was our first lesson? The first lesson was handled by me and Apostle Paul. So, who remember the title or the topic of the first lesson? Developing what? A teachable spirit. So, I uh, was the second lesson that Brackin is going to be teaching tonight. Who can remind us what's the second lesson we had last week? Mm -hmm. Hello. Hi. Keeping the Hi. unity of the spirit, sir. Okay, thank you, Brashim. You must talk. You see, it's part of the thing we are talking. If you don't talk, it shows it shows that you are not learning and you are not you are not following the teachings of the house and being loyal. So when when you don't encourage your teacher, how will your teacher know that oh you you understand what they are talking about? So let us encourage our teacher that we are following them. So who can give me one or two things that you learned last week uh, from the teaching? Uh, one or two things that you learned from the keeping of the unity of the spirit. Yeah, I need somebody to tell me a little bit. Yeah, so, okay, it's okay. So okay. tell me, what, what did you learn quickly? Yes. Yes, go ahead, Sister Moyo. You want to give it to us? Yes, go ahead and tell us what did you learn? Yeah, we learn about uh, the unity of the spirit that is in that us. Yeah, Brad Boris, go on. Hallelujah. We learn yeah, unite, unity in prayer. Unity we learn in about prayer. The purpose, yeah, the purpose of the church. And when there is unity, um, uh, it guides us with authority too. And we also learn about uh, hindrance in unity. Hindrance is to unity. All right. Interesting to unity. Amen. Thank you. Sister Moyo, what did you say we learn? One more thing. Okay, we should never argue with our teacher. So that is um um having a teachable spirit. That's what Sister Moyo is bringing us into. All right, Bracky, over to you. We are bringing you on. So let's okay. welcome our teacher for tonight. Uh, as Brother K will be ministering to us. Let's give the Lord a shout offering. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 So you are with me. Okay, right. Yeah, Bracky, over to you. Yeah, amen. So, yeah, so last amen. week I um, I started on uh, how to promote church unity. Yeah. And um, one of the first thing is that we, we must understand the purpose of the church. We talked about the purpose of the church. Yes, sir. Uh, why, why we have the church and, what, you know, the mission of the church. We also looked at understanding authority. That is, yeah. you know, authority and leadership in the church. Yeah. We touched on united prayer, why we need to pray, you know, as a corporate body, and why we need to also pray for our leaders. 
and um, and the power in uh, you know corporate prayers. And um, we'll, today we'll be looking at um, handling offenses, doing things in love, mm. uh, and also about praying for our leaders. And that will bring us to the end of uh, the topic: keeping the unity of the church. Yes, sir. So. Let, let us pray. Heavenly Father, our King and our God, we give you all the honor, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor. Father, Lord, as we go into your word, open the eyes of our understanding. Heavenly Amen. Father, let your word, let it bear fruit in our lives, a hundredfold, a thousandfold, and a millionfold. Father, Lord, Amen. by the time we will share the grace here today, let us know that we came and we met the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Amen. So we're looking at um, handling offenses. Um, Matthew 5 uh, verses uh 23 to 24 admonishes us you know about how we should conduct ourselves when in church when we have a you know a situation with our brother or our sister or we have an offense with someone it asks us to you know basically be reconciled you know to our brother before we even put you know our tithes and our offering down so offense cannot but come you know offenses will divide and bring this unity you know but um offenses when properly handled you know, we'll keep the work of, of, of God going and our life sweet and, and beautiful. In uh, Philippians 1 verses uh, 9 to 10, it tells us to be sincere, you know, without offense to the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know, in the church, offense will come, but it is the question is, how do you handle the offense? <coughs> Amen. Let's, and the Bible is telling us that, you know, we should be reconciled to our brethren and we should have a sincere heart and uh, this will keep you know, the work of God going on uh, and our lives sweet and beautiful. Amen? Amen. Amen. Next thing is uh, about, the next thing about um, keeping the, the unity in the, in the church is doing all things in love. All doing all things in love. And um, we have some references, Ephesians 4, verse uh, 2, Ephesians 4, verses 15 to 16, Ephesians 3, verses uh, 17, Ephesians 5, verses uh 20 uh, verses 2 and first Thessalonians 3 uh, verses 12 we don't have time to you know to, to read each one of those scriptures oh, yeah. but what it, it's it, but you know the gist of it as you all know is it, it talks about love that is everything we do you know must be without jealousy without boasting without quarreling we must ensure that whatever we do in the house of God in our families and in our businesses or in our in our daily life must be done in love and with a general interest and profit of the whole house in mind. So not, mm. you know, not doing things for your own personal good, but for the body of Christ, of which, you know, we, we, we are a, a member of that body. You know, I mean, love really has to be your, your motivation, you know, and we have to examine our beliefs and our ideas and ensure that we, are, we have the right and good uh, mind and attitude and nothing we do should be out of arrogance or or to win, you know, and I'll give you an example, you know, sometimes, you know, people want to give the biggest uh, offering or contribution or tithe in church. It shouldn't really be about who is doing, you know, the biggest thing or, or, or who is giving the most. The Bible says, let not your left hand, you know, uh, and your right hand know what, you know, all the things you are giving, which I mean, that we should give generously. Amen. And, and then the, the, the last thing, you know, um, is about praying for our leaders, praying for our leaders. This is um, something that, you know, um, is very important because our leaders stand in the face of attacks, opposition, you know, uh, weaknesses, the temptations, trials, deci decisions that they have to make, you know, afflictions and all sorts of oppositions. As believers, you know, we must continually lift them up in prayer so that they can, you know, lead us well and not do things that will jeopardize our lives and our ministry. And, you know, we, we need to realize, and I, 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 I'll, you know, say this out of personal experience, you know, in, in, in my last church, I was, you know, in the prayer warrior team. I remember a time we went to pray for a sister in church. And, um, you know, four of us went to pray for a sister in church. And guess what happened to all four of us? We all faced, you know, individual attacks, you know, um, after we went to pray for this sister. So, you know, we need to, to lift up our leaders, lift up our pastor, Pastor Bayo, you know, he's the shepherd of this flock. I, 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 and I'm sure he cannot even begin to tell you what he, you know, he faces on a daily basis as he shepherds this flock. So we know we really need to make sure we are constantly, like the apostle was saying, 
pray without ceasing. We need to pray for our leaders, pray for our, our leadership, pray for ourselves, pray for the church, you know, without ceasing. You know, ministry leadership or any leadership of any kind, be it, you know, at home, in your house, in your job, in government, is not easy. You know, no, no leadership is easy. You know, we must pray for our leaders so that, you know, they too can help to keep the unity and the spirit of the church going. There's a popular secular saying that says, uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown, and you will agree with me that um, you know being a leader it requires you know um, a lot of um, um, long uh, uh, oversight, a lot of you know protection of your flock, or looking out for people for things that they can't see. You know that's what uh, you know leadership is about. And, and finally, you know we have to understand that um, one of the, the the largest prayers that was ever recorded, you know, was that in John 17. John 17, we won't read for the sake of time, but if, if you have time, John 17, verses 6 to 19, you find that Jesus prayed for his disciples that they be one. He prayed for them. that be, they, Just as he was one with the Father, he prayed that they would be one as well. And then, in, 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 and then in John 17, 20 to 26, Jesus prays for all believers, that is you and I, you and I, you know, our leaders in church, you know, our brethren and, and, and everyone, you know, that believes in him. He prayed for, for, for all believers that, you know, they may be one. And, you know, this um, had to do with the unity of all believers. That is the whole church at large. You know, we must, you know, all individually and collectively be ende endeavoring that prayer is fulfilled in our lives and in our church. We have to endeavor to keep unity. Amen. And um, I pray that... Um, the Lord will, will damage our ignorance and he will ignite the fire, you know, on the altar of our prayer so that we can be more united. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, Bracky. All right. Before, before, hold on. Bracky, still leave Bracky on there. Uh, before Bracky will go, um, do we have any question for him? I have one. So uh, I want to ask, how can one... How can one walk in the house of God and you are doing something great for God and you are not doing it in love? How, how is it possible? Is it possible to walk or do the work of God and not do it in love? It, it, it's, I mean, that is, it's, there, there are some things in mathematics that we say are mutually exclusive. It's not possible. It's not possible. There are things, there are some things that, you know, they're just not possible. How can you, be working, you know, because if we if we going back to what we were reading, what we we're talking about in Matthew, Matthew 5, 23 24, it talks, yeah. you know, it tells us that, you know, if you have a, an offense with your brother, it says, you know, go and reconcile and be reconciled with your brother before you come and drop your offering. So, you know, it's 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 not possible for for someone to say they're working, you know, in the house of God and there's no love there. It's it's, it's, I don't see how it's possible, but you know, I I I I stand to be corrected. Okay, but thank you. Going by the biblical test of it, it yeah. says you know we have to do all things in love, and uh, love. we have to be sincere without offense. So if you have an offense in your heart, then you need to to, to stop what you are doing and go and be reconciled before you continue in that work. All right. Amen. Yeah. Any other person want to contribute to that? Yes. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, can you please repeat the question, sir? Is it possible to, to be working for God and doing something in the house of God and you are doing it without love in your heart? Oh, yeah, definitely, sir. It happens every day, every second of the day. Uh, just like um, some people will go to church. We, we need to see you because you are speaking. We have our live audience who are watching. So please, um, if you are talking, we want it to come alive so that people can feel the impact. Uh, it's very interactive section right now. And so, okay, yes, sir. go ahead. All right, sir. Good evening, sir. God bless so, you. It is possible for someone to actually be working in the church and doing it out of self-service. That's yeah. the word, self-service. Because okay. sometimes people do some things. It's just like, it's just for me, myself, and I to be recognized. You mm -hmm. know, and when we're talking about unity in the church, we have to understand the foundation of unity in the first place. Yes, God sir. himself understands the importance of unity. That's why he changed all languages you remember the the tower of babel because they yeah. were united they had one language 
And everybody was like, okay, we're going to build a tower to reach heaven. And it was going well until God saw like, okay, if I don't change their languages or change the language, yeah. you're gonna, they're going to get to heaven. So yeah. we have to understand the fundamental of unity. If we're talking about unity, we have yeah. to connect to God. God is the foundation of everything when it comes to unity. Right? All right. So, and some people, they have like ulterior motive. When they come into the church, they can, they can pay tight. They can, you know, contribute to the work of God and stuff, but they are doing it in the sense that, well, I'm trying to do it. So when it's time for a pastor to nominate the head usher, my okay. name is going to be called. Or when the pastor is trying to make a decision in the church, I have to be there. I have to have a say. So it's possible for someone to be active in the church and just doing it out of self-service, not for the love of God or for the advancement of the church. It is possible, sir. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Apostle Paul. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead. Uh, we have five minutes before we bring the Tobina. Yes, go ahead. Yes, I uh, kind of uh, tilt towards what uh, Brashen is saying. Um, you see, our work with God uh, is quite different with our work for God. Um, you see, people could be serving with, in the household of faith, you know, but what they are doing may not be with a perfect heart, but they are doing the right thing. You know, I can liken that to what the Bible was saying about some of the kings. If you go to Second Chronicles, for example, uh, in the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 25. Second, go ahead, sir. Let me read it just briefly. Second Chronicles 25. Second Chronicles 25. Verse 2, for example, or I'll start from verse 1. Second Chronicles 25, it says, And Amaziah was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign. What I was, yeah. And he reigned 20 and 9 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Joe Adam to Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, but not to the perfect heart. Mm. You see, you can liken that. I know it's, it may not fall into like everyday church work, but this is a king that was walking, you know, the, the flock, leading the flock of Israel. You get mm -hmm. some pastors maybe doing God's work, sir, but not with the right heart. You know, yeah. they are not in God's will. The same thing with our brethren in the church. You get me? So they could yeah. be serving, serving fervently, even when you know, sir, but not with the right heart, not with the mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or they could have strife in one way with another person but they have pride in them they have not yet broken you know you can apply to somebody carrying harboring bitterness mm -hmm. so those one thing their way right you know as, as against others they could keep Bible. you go first uh corinthians 13 talking about love in you start strife love is kind yeah. and people do not imbibe all those things but yet they are serving in god's house so I tend to agree with Rashaun. It, it, it is possible, sir, you have asked people working, but not with the right heart, not with the perfect act. And still All not. All right. Thank you. Oh, thank you. All right. Thank you. I want to quickly add to you. Okay. Yeah. Mommy want to say something. Uh, go ahead. Oh. Hallelujah. I want to say uh, it is possible to have um, to, bring, uh, to have people who are working in the church. Yeah. Uh, and they are dedicated to whatever they are doing, mm. but sincerely, there is no love in what they are doing. Mm. The reason is because they have uh, a different uh, mission, and which uh, a lot of, I, I would say this will concern the leaders, mm. um, because of their first appearance and whatever they, they are doing, they, they somehow capture the heart of the leader and they are being brought into the camp and before you know it this these people all they want to get is just to get an information they are closer to you they are in the church you see them as a good brother a good sister uh, and, and, right. and because um they are very intelligent so you just feel this is the kind of people that we need uh, in the church and before you know it you will not know that these people are there to just get something from you to take back 
to the camp of the enemy. So you will see these people walking every time in the church, going, if they call them, they answer, they do this, but sincerely there is no love because they are just doing it because they have a mission. All right, thank you, ma. All right, Sister Nonye, um, Onye, this are somebody giving a comment online. I want to quickly read this, and then I take one scripture before um, uh, I bring Brother Dr. Obina for lesson three today. I will introduce Which? that uh, briefly. Uh, Sister Nonye, Onye, this is Sister Christine. He said, agreeing with Brother Shane, the problem is such hypocritical or self sacrificing act will not contribute in the advancement or unity of the church. So like our teacher said, uh, all things should be done. And you see, one of the reasons why we are having this teaching is not just only for our church and for as many who are watching online, that it is very possible for you to be in the church. You are doing a lot of service for God. Now, Braki says something which is very true, that it is, uh, it is an error in the kingdom of God for you to say you are working for God and you are working and what you are doing is not born out of love. Yet it is possible. And that is not the intention of the kingdom. In the kingdom, you got to do everything out of love. So if it is not coming from a heart of love, mm -hmm. there is a motive. And I want us to read Philippians chapter 2. Uh, if you are there quickly, Philippians chapter 2. I want somebody with King James Version. And I want to read the... Um, this is called the, the J.P. Philip version. But somebody read King James for me, Fles. Um, Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, quickly. Uh, anybody, uh, uh, Bible readers, please, anybody, because of time. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. I want, I want you to see what the scripture says there. Who is reading, please? Philippians, quickly. Hallelujah. Nobody go ahead and read. We don't have all, all the time. Please don't say you are the only one reading. Hallelujah. It's nobody's business. Philippians chapter two, from, yes. chapter two, from verse one to three. Yes. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if there's any, if consolation any comfort in of Christ, love, yes, sir. If any comfort of love, yeah. And if, if any fellowship of the Spirit, yeah. If any affection and mercy, yep. Fulfill my joy by being Fulfill my joy. By being mm -hmm. like-minded, yes, having sir. the same love, being mm -hmm. of having one accord. This, I want it to look. Okay, you see now, Paul is saying that you should have the same love. So to what Bracky was saying that, how do you want to do the work of God without love? But it is possible for you. So Paul is saying that there is a danger, there is a tendency for you to do it, and it's not born out of love. And Paul said it's born out of another motive. Now, read mm -hmm. verse 3. Verse 3. Let yeah. nothing be done through selfish ambitions or conflict. let nothing be done through what selfish, selfish ambitions. ambitions yes sir but in lowliness of mind let yep. each extend others better yep. than himself mm -hmm. and that than himself yes go on verse four let each of you look out not only for his own interest but also for the interest of others so whatever we do in the kingdom of god it has to be with the interests of the God members. and not with the, the uh, we have to have the interests of God and the interests of others in mind. It should never be of vain glory. Uh, a translation said, let, I think King James Version said, whatever you are doing, let it not be of vain glory. glory. Uh, any other translation, NLT, before I read the J.B. Philip Version, any other translation there, somebody there, read for me. What version do you have? Amplify NLT. NLT, verse, verse 3 especially, verse 3 and 4. Read. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress. So it is possible for you to do the work of God with just want to impress people. Yes. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourself. Yes. Go on. Verse four. Don't look out for your own interest. It's not about you. It's about the kingdom. It's about Christ. It's about others. Yes. Go ahead. Take an interest in order. The reason why we are having this series is for us to be able to have a healthy church. When we understand the purpose why we are in the church of God, whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it for the sake of the name of the Lord. And it has to be battered out of love. That is why Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians, I might have the tongue of angel, I might prophesy, I might do all this thing. If I have no love, I'm like a tickling simba. So people can teach out of love. They can do it without love. 
people can people can people can preach people can prophesy people can sing and do everything and they are doing it uh, uh can you turn that fan to my wife so that let her keep keep keep, keep warm the temperature is is too much here but well god god is good so it's, it's still part of love i'm showing love oh praise god hallelujah so anything you do that is not out of love the Bible said is 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 unable. Yeah, somebody want to say so Susie, do I have somebody raising up their hand? Yes. Yeah, Boris. Yeah, so before Boris talk, let me read this translation. J.P. Philip Basham. He said, Now, if you have known anything of Christ's encouragement and of his reassuring love, if you have known something of the fellowship of his spirit and of compassion and deep sympathy, do make my joy complete. Live together in harmony. Live together in love as though you had only one mind and one spirit between you. Never act from motive of rivalry or personal vanity, but in humility, think more of each other you do, than you do of yourself. None of you should think only of his own affairs, but consider other people's interests also. This is what makes us Christian. This is the joy that we have, that we got to think of other people, if people have the mind of Christ, if we have this motive, whatever we are doing in love, in the church, in the nation, in your workplace, I'm telling you the world will be a better place. Yeah, Brad Boris, I'm going to take only that and then I'm going to bring Dr. Obina. Yeah, Brad Boris. Thank you, Daddy. Uh, I yeah. have this question. What is, uh, is unity required all the times and what are the exceptions in unity? Is unity in the church required all the times? And what are the exceptions to unity? So, Brother Key is the teacher tonight. I'm not going, Brother Key. <laughs> answer that question. You are the teacher. Of, so, our teacher is going to answer us. Yeah, Brother Key, over to you, sir. So, again, Brother Boris. Brother Boris, repeat. Brother the Boris, question. Yes. Brother my Boris, question is Is unity? Required all the times, and what are the exceptions to unity? Let me give an example. This is pandemic where we're going through. Though, say they say, say that um, uh, with the, the divided uh, we fall, united we stand. But this time now it is dividing. Anyway, that is not the main part. But in the church, mm -hmm. unity is it required all the time? Because there are cases I I do consider that we, we don't want it to be united, that cases that are different. So my question, I repeat, is unity in the church required all the time? And what are the exceptions to unity? Yeah, yeah, uni I mean, unity by the, I mean, by the very nature of, of, of our faith and I mean, and our, our call, you know, to the body of Christ, where mm -hmm. many members, but one body. So unity is actually required. You know, all the time. How can we be one body if we're not united? Mm. But you know, the Bible does say that you know, if if we have um, an erring brother, you know, uh, we, we should first, you know, we should you know talk to them. We should talk to them. They don't listen. Call a few other elders and talk to them. But at some point, you will have to leave them. You know, as as a castaway. Even God mm. said, God said to He said, um, Ephraim has joined himself to idols. You see, mm. let, him, let him alone. But but there is a process to getting to that point. But but you know, in a, in a general sense, our faith requires unity. You know. Thank you, thank you. So, Brad Boris, uh, but uh, like Brad King rightly said, uh, and my answer to you is First Corinthians one ten, First Corinthians one ten, and uh, you know this is what the Bible said uh, in First Corinthians chapter one verse ten. He said, "Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing." Amen unity and that there'll be no division yeah. unity among you unity, unity but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment so in other words i cannot be doing something different i can god cannot be leading me as a pastor or leading me as a pastor of the church in a direction and you as uh, as my assistant pastor as a sister yeah, minister you are going another direction God, the choir master cannot be giving you a, 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 a direction for the choir. And you said, no, I don't want to go the way the choir mistress is going. I have my own agenda. You mm -hmm. can't have two vision in the church. Anything with two vision is a division. Division. division means division. 
when there is two head, when there is two vision in the house, there is division. The church cannot run. The church cannot be healthy. The same thing in the marriage, the same thing in the house. The husband cannot say, oh, tomorrow our agenda is that we want to this year, we want to make sure we save like $100,000. And the wife will say, no, I want to make sure that I, I go to the Bahamas. No, I want to go on, 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 the, on, the, on the cruise. And at the end of the day, you look at everything you have planned. Your wife has a different agenda. She wants pleasure. You want investment. At the end of the day, a house divided against itself cannot stand. Yeah. So the reason why our churches, and you know, one of the things, uh, I don't know whether it was Brad King that was teaching that or uh, she last week. One of the reasons why the church loses power, why yeah. we are not seeing demonstration of power in the church, is because there is no unity in the church. Unity of purpose, unity of vision, unity in mind. Apostle Paul said, be of the same mind, be of the same spirit, be of one in the same judgment. Mm -hmm. You got to follow. And, and there's something, if I, I, I have the permission, I'll be able to share as I was walking, driving last night and, and to walk and... I was listening to a message by Prophet Sadhu that he preached in the Philippines. And the, the title of the message, you can look for it on online, uh, is the mighty, uh, mighty Visitation of God in the Philippines. And Prophet Sadhu said he was ministering in the church and suddenly he saw the angel of the Lord flew into the church and he saw a lot of bosses. And the bosses were scattered. And the angel said unto him that in this church, they are not united. They are disorganized. They are not orderly. The pastor's wife is doing his own thing. Assistant pastor is doing his own thing. The pastor is taking them one place. Everybody have the same mind. He said, tell them this is the reason why they are not going to see the power of God. He said, and the angel begin to rearrange the buses according to their sizes, according to their order. He said, the power will not flow until there is orderliness and there is unity. And you will never see orderliness until there is unity. And there will be, never, there will be no unity until, until there is orderliness. So we need to understand this concept. And that is when we'll be able to grow. The church will grow. The power of God will come. Because God is not the author of confusion. He's the God who is going to keep us together. Amen. Okay, somebody has a question. Yes. Uh, just to kind of say a little bit, a little, a little stuff about what uh, Brother Boris was asking about. Yeah. So uh, sometimes in the church, I just want to be, I just want to be uh, real for a second. Yes, so sir. sometimes right. in the church, there can be a disunity. Why? And I remember pastor said this one time, uh, he says this all the time, like, you know, follow this calling unless you see me doing something outside of God. Right. So that's him telling us that, hey, the name of this Jesus that I'm calling is real. Don't do anything outside of this Jesus name. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you see me going outside of this Jesus, mm -hmm. then don't follow me anymore. Right. Yeah. So yeah. basically what is basically teaching us is in the church, we have to be together. We have to unite to do the right thing, to follow the name of Jesus Christ, to do his teaching and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. But. Yeah. People come together, people unite to do evil. So it's possible for disunity to be in the church if the church is not heading in the right direction. So in the name of unity now, if a church is heading in the wrong direction, you see yeah. the pastor that is saying, okay, uh, brethren, please, tomorrow, we are going to invite uh, Babalawo to come and preach in the church. Is the yes. current Babalawo of this city or this uh, state. He's very, he's very vast in juju and everything. I just want him to share one or two things with you in case if Jesus' <laughs> name is not working for you, you can seek a temporary solution, right? Okay. So people come together to do evil. So sometimes in a church, you can, you can kind of step back from what people are coming together for and ask God to lead you and ask the Spirit of God to lead you and keep you away from what is not right in the church. So sometimes Amen. you will see a disunity in the church when people are not doing the right thing. The right thing. Thank you, Brashio. Okay, there is a question online. Um, Bracky, uh, this is for you. Somebody yeah. said, what if you are living out of love and it is used to arm you or taking advantage of your kindness and love? This is coming from Sister Barbara online. He said, what if you are doing everything out of love and everything you are doing out of love for God or for an individual? And the people are using your love and they are taking advantage of your love. What do you do? How do you react? Back to you, Brad. Okay, our, our, our teacher yeah, for tonight. I mean, the, the, that's a very good question. And, I, and in actual fact, I think we've dealt with this before because, I mean, Jesus, the, the, 
when Jesus answered uh, the question, said, how many times should we forgive, you know, people? Mm. And uh, was it 49 times? I mean, seven, you know, seven times, seven times, seven. But basically, there was no limit to forgiveness, you know. Now, there's nothing wrong with forgiving people, but there comes to a point where it becomes abuse. You know, people are abusing you, are taking advantage. In that situation, you know, you still will forgive, but you need to find out and figure out what is a healthy boundary between you and that situation. You know, that's the way I personally deal with it. You know, I'll still forgive the person, still continue in love, but I would, you know, set a healthy boundary between myself and that situation or that person. You know, not that I would stop forgiving. So, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, uh, Sister Barbara, I think you can get that. So, that no matter what uh, what the person is doing, you you have to keep on loving. You need to keep on loving, and uh, the more uh, the more you love, you you love, you forgive. But uh, don't be don't uh, like you said in the palace. Don't be stupid and don't don't give yourself to be taken advantage of. Like like Bracken said, you want to show the person that you love. You want to show the person you are forgiving them, but at the same time, you don't want them to take advantage of your liberty in Christ. Okay, sometimes that could be a, uh, make sure that you don't give room for them to hurt you. But that does not mean you are not going to love them. You are going to love them. You are going to forgive them. Jesus said, how many times should we forgive? He said, 70 times 7, not 7 times 7. Mm -hmm. 70 times 7, and which is 490. Somebody said, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, it's only a madman. That, and that's, four, that's 490 times. Mm -hmm. Not in one year, in one day. And I don't think there's anybody who will offend you 490 times in a day. No Even a madman cannot offend you 490 times in a day. No. So, but we need God to increase our faith because some of us, some people say, no, pastor, I, I, can't, I can't take that. So that is why we need to say, Lord, help us. The disciple of Jesus said, Lord, increase our faith. Hallelujah. God bless you. All right. So we are moving on to the next lesson for today. And uh, I want to bring um, Dr. Obina, uh, lesson three. Today, we are starting with rebuke and reprove of love. So I think it's a spillover from what uh, uh, the previous teacher have just taught. And then um, we are going to be looking into reprove and uh, rebuke and reprove of love. And uh, our test for that is going to be taken from Leviticus chapter 19 and Hebrews chapter 5. So I, I'm going to read the introduction, then I bring Dr. Obina. Dr. Obina will start from rules for reproof and rebuke. So he says, men are bound to make mistakes. People are, are bound to go off track and even going to sin. But we as believers are not to act as if it is none of our business. The word of God permits us to reprove our neighbors for their sins. If we do not, we become partakers or accessory to their sins. If we really love God, we will feel bound to reprove those who hate, abuse, and break his commandment. Now, somebody read for me, please, Leviticus chapter, uh, Titus rather, Sh Titus chapter 2, verse 1 to 7 and verse uh, 15. Titus, the book of Titus chapter 2, quickly, please. Titus, and if you can share the scripture for me briefly, um, please go ahead. If you're able to share your screen and bring the scripture. Uh, Titus chapter... <laughs> Somebody say shy online. Titus chapter <laughs> chapter chapter two verses one to seven. Yeah, do, do we have the scripture? Yeah, read for me, please. But but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Yes, go ahead. That the aged men be sober. That the aged men be sober. Grave, temperate. Yep. Yep. Sound in faith, yep. in charity, in, in charity, yeah, in patience, in patience. The aged women, likewise, yeah, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Yes, sir. Not false accusers. Not false accusers. Not giving too much wine. Yeah. Teachers of good things. Teachers of good things. Yes. That they may teach the young women to be sober. Yeah. To love their husbands. Yes. To love their children. Yes. To be discreet. Mm -hmm. Chaste. Yeah. Keepers at home. Yes, sir. Good. Obedient to their own husbands. Obedient to their own husbands. That the word of God be not blasphemed. Yes. 
Young men likewise. Yep. Exhort to be sober-minded in all things. Yeah. Showing that set a pattern of good works. Yes, sir. In doctrine, showing uncorrupt, uncorruptness. Yeah. Gravity, sincerity. Young to about 15, sir. 16. 15, 15, 15, yeah. These things speak. These things speak. And exalt. Exalt. And rebuke with all authority. Rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. So this is one of the, thank you. So this is, verse 15 is the key verse on, is that these things speak with all authority, exalt and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise you. So in the church of God, you cannot do anything anyhow. You can't live anyhow. You can't behave anyhow. You can't live your life. You can't say it's nobody's business. If you belong to a local church, a local assembly, you cannot be doing the things you like. You cannot live in sin. You cannot, pro you cannot, you cannot just be creating trouble in your own, your marriage. We cannot hear in the church that you are always fighting your husband. Today you bite your husband. Tomorrow you beat your wife. No, the church of God will call you to order. No matter how much money you are giving us in the church, we are not going to be intimidated by your money. Just like Bracky was saying earlier on, the fact that because you give the church big donation, you give the church big money, because of that you are misbehaving and we are going to leave you. No, we are not going to leave you. If your pastor is leaving you, you are in you are in error. They are leading you to destruction. The church of God, the purpose of the church of God is to help people to bring our life back in order. To bring us back in the order with Christ's life. Christ's life character. Apostle Paul said, my little children, of whom I travail in birth until Christ be born in you. So the purpose of the church is to, to make sure that Christ is seen in you, is seen in me. I want to become like Jesus. You want to become like Jesus. And part of the way of becoming like Jesus is that we are going to correct you. So if you are not going to receive correction, then you have to leave the church. We have to excommunicate you. But we are still going to do it in love. So the purpose of this teaching is for you to know that when you belong to a church, you need to know that you belong to the family of God. The church is a family. In the family, there is correction, there is review. We correct our children when, when they are wrong. We correct our spouses, our, our a, a, a family members. So get ready to be corrected in the church. And we are going to do it in love. So I'm going to bring Dr. Obina, but let me read this introduction. If I love the government of this country, won't I re reprove and rebuke a man who abuses or breaks a rule? If a child loves his parent, who in rebuke a man who abuses his parent? If a man loves the universe and is motivated by love, he knows that evil and pollution is consistent with the is not consistent with the highest good of the universe. If not, counteracted sin will injure and ruin our very nation, our very nature rather. Sin tolerated is destruction in the making. When we continue to tolerate sin and we don't correct it, we don't rebuke it, it's destruction we are looking at. Its direct tendency of sin is to overthrow the order and destroy the happiness of the church or the universe. Therefore, if a Christian sees this happening, his, his benevolence will lead him to reprove and oppose sin. So every one of us, we are watching over for one another. We have to love one another and look for a way to correct errors. And we have to do this in love, not in judgment. So put that at the back of your mind. We don't, we don't judge, we don't condemn. And in the church, we don't punish for sin. We discipline for sin. Because punishment does not bring repentance. Disciplines bring repentance and bring restoration. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. So we are looking at rules for reproof and rebuke. So Dr. Obina, over to you. We cannot hear you. You are muted. Your voice is not so come 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 alive again. Your voice, we need to hear from you. The devil is a liar. Dr. Obina, we can't hear you yet. You are still mute. I can see that you are muted. The sign is showing that you are muted. Hello. Can you All hear right, me? Right here. God bless you. Yes. Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> okay. Um, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Brother King, Brother Paul, 
and uh, all the people that have made contribution. I do appreciate all our contributions. It's been wonderful. Um, learning what unity is and uh, going ahead in Christendom. I like the comment that Brother <coughs> Kunle made, made. He says that if you are coming to church and you are working, it's, uh, it's called working and it is not a uh, service, something of that nature. But um, I want to go straight to the rules of reproof and rebuke, then we can move ahead from there. Yeah. Praise God. I believe we are all hearing me. Yes, sir. Yeah, because I'm having a little bit of network fluctuations, but be that as it may, um, love, uh, the rules of reproof and rebuke. One of the first ones that we're going to be talking about is the love your neighbor. It's love your neighbor. Love your Praise neighbor. God. Amen. Now let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. Okay. Is anybody there to read for us? Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. Matthew 5, 43. Go ahead. Okay. Who is there? <clears throat> Is anybody there to read for us? Matthew chapter Hallelujah. 5, verse 43. Yes, yeah. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. Yes, please. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Okay, I want us to stop there because if you go for that, it's going to confuse us a little. But okay. then, let me read the introduction of this. And I want you to keep this at the back of your mind. It says, love your neighbor. My basic question to you is, who is your neighbor? As we discuss unity in church, as we discuss the rules to rebuke and to reprove and bring back people together in unity in Christendom, my question is to you is, who is your neighbor in the church? Mm. You see, there is this parable that we always say in those days, and that is, um, somebody comes to your house and start telling you, while I was sleeping, James put his leg on top of me and I had to push it away. The first question you're going to be asking is, are you and James sleeping in the same house? Are you living in the same house? Or if I come to complain to you that, ah, the place that I kept my food, somebody came carried it and ate it. You're going to ask me, how did the person enter my house in the first place? Now, why I made that illustration is to help you understand that for somebody to be a member of your church or your neighbor in church, the person is a, already a part and parcel of your, your community in church. Mm. Praise God. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Even though you're posing a little bit. Oh, sorry. Why, your voice is on. The picture is only frozen. So no, go ahead. We are hearing you. Okay, so the person is already a part and parcel of that community. It's already yeah. a part and parcel of that church. So it is only people that are having something in common that can say, that can say to each other, I have offended you and I mm. need regret. So I need, uh, I need you to have mercy. I need you to forgive. So yeah. when you are not close, when you don't have anything binding you, you don't have anything coming. Home, uh, bringing both of you together. Mm. That, there is no room for that in the first place. And the basic thing that brings us together is the fact that we are children of God. Mm. We are Christians. And to move ahead, we need to have that basic understanding of what Christianity does to each and every one of us. Praise yeah. God. Hallelujah. Now, the introduction here as part of the first rule is love your neighbor. Love for a particular people with whom you are connected should lead you to reprove sin. Mm. Uh, reproving sin is part of, you know, you have seen something they are doing that is not right. You have observed something that is not in line with what they are doing. So you want to reprove them. You want to correct them. You want to help them do what is right. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sin is a reproach to any people. What that means is that there is something that is even uh, greater and better than sin. Righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. 
any man who commits sin also helps produce a society and organization harmful to everything good, such as examples of corrupt society, destroy its peace and introduce disorder. Now, the word of God encourages believers to speak to their neighbors in love about their sin, to reprove them, not to judge them. I think this is a good discussion point. How do you reprove somebody and not judge them? Or how do you, you know, make corrections to somebody and not judge them? We're in a society that is, you easy, we easily judge people for so many things. Mm. But how do you go ahead? You want to correct somebody. You want to, you want to make somebody, you want to make somebody, uh, you want to, sorry, please. Yeah. You want to help somebody understand something. How do you go ahead telling that person corrective uh, information without judging them? First of yeah. all, and I, I'm throwing it to everybody because I need yeah, to so I think that's the question. I, we need people to contribute. How do you how do you correct people without judging them? Yeah, please go ahead, make your comment. Let's see your hand. Anybody? Yes, yeah, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, well, God has thrown that to us, and it's kind of, I don't know. I think there's a thin line between trying to correct them and uh, judging them, not judge them. Um, for me, I think I think it's a it's a it's a question of methodology. Okay. Okay. How we approach an individual that is erring. Mm. So, um, knowing fully where the Bible says that even an open book is better than secret love. You yeah. know, however, whatever we do, we must allow wisdom to dictate how we talk to people. You know, usually when you approach people harshly, they will put on a defensive mechanism, you know, and they will react. Now, we live in a society where people are always using uh, that that uh, fact that you're trying to judge me, they use the fact that you're trying to judge them as a defensive tool so that you can shut up. That's what is prevalent in this society. You know, knowing fully well that the Bible says, they will even tell that the Bible says judge not so that you should not be judged. You express your opinion about certain things, if you in love, they would, they would always say that you are judging them. Mm. You yourself, you are without no sin. Said he who has no sin, let him cast the first stone. Uh, what I would say is that it's a matter of approach. Bible says, you know, in love, correction in love, you know. I mean, talk to people nicely, you know, approach them. You know, sometimes when they when they have this wall around them, it's your, your your method. I mentioned that earlier. When you would talk to them about love, how God has said this, how God is saying that, and then it's always good that when you're trying to correct people, you know, most times it's good for you to refer to your own weakness. Mm. That this is what you have been through. This is what you have been through. This is what you have been. And this is what God has brought you out of. Mm. You know? And that you're not perfect. You're still a work in progress. Mm. You, know? but you talk to them. You know, I, I don't think there's a better way. I don't know. Maybe some other people have some other way. Thank you. Yes. Right. Any, anybody, any other person wanting to help us? Thank you, Brother Paul. Um, if is there any other person wanted to contribute, please don't make it too, too uh, if I'll say two seconds or two minutes, I don't know which one is going to be uh, perfect for us. Praise God, yeah. 60 seconds, that was like one minute, okay. 60 seconds, one minute, yeah. that's that's okay, that will work before we go ahead. Nobody yeah, contribute. we, need, we need contribution. How, how do you, uh, our teacher is asking, how do you correct and not be judgmental? How do you correct and not be judgmental? Praise God. Hello? Let's go ahead. I will give, ahead. I will give us instances. Uh, so our time is not uh, too far spent. Yeah. You ahead, see, uh, the word of God encourages... Uh, uh, Dr. Obina, Dr. Obina, one second, please. Somebody have um, a comment here. From okay. Sister Monye on you he say he said by first understanding that you are not perfect yourself. I love that. If you believe Thank that God. you yourself, if you if you believe that you yourself are not above mistake, 
It helps you deliver your message to them from a place of love. Wow, I love that. Let, let's clap. Let's clap. I, I, and I think I like that. Don't call me that. Uh, let me yes. quickly, let me quickly, before I throw that back to you, uh, and I think that's a very good, important thing that Sister Noye just mentioned. And if you look at one of the scriptures we are considering, it's Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1 to 4. So if you, you, you can read that scripture, the Bible says that everyone who is taken as a priest among men, the reason why I am appointed as a pastor, you are appointed as a leader, as a Christian, is first to realize that you yourself, you are subject to those mistakes. Yes, sir. So if you if you look from that perspective, I, I don't know if somebody can, Dr. Ben, I'm sorry, let me quickly take your time. I, I'll throw it back to you. I want us to read that scripture because I like to show the world. It's not because when this is Bible study, Christianity is not my opinion. It's not about your opinion. It is about what does God say. What is the word of God? So when we are having this kind of godly discussion, it's not about your idea. It's not about my uh, education or my wisdom. It's about what is the will of God? How does God want me to, to correct people without judging them? And I think Sister Noyen just nailed it on the head. So anybody that have that, please quickly open Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 to 4. Hebrews 5. If you have that scripture, let's read because of time. I need to throw it back to our teacher. It said, For every high priest taken from among men is appointed in matters pertaining to God for the people to offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and going astray, since he is also clothed with weakness. Because of this, he must make an offering for his own sins as well as for the people. No one takes this honor unto himself instead of a person who is called by God, just as Aaron was called. So thank you, Dr. Bina, back to you. Praise God uh, for that contribution. Yeah, you see, I, I have it in a different uh, version, and I just want to pick verse 4. The living, the New Living Translation says in verse 4, it says, and no one can become a high priest simply because he wants such an honor. Mm. Uh, he must be called by God for this work, just as mm. Aaron was. So the, the work of God is a calling in the first place. So because some people have been called, others are there to either follow or um, submit to the rules that encourage Christianity to grow. But I would like to also put a, a, a something in parenthesis there, and that is Christianity has grown to the level we understand it now because of what I call disruption in, in the unity. Mm. I, I don't want to um, take us away from what we are teaching, but I just want you to bear that in mind. The fact that we have scriptures now that we can read is because some people disrupted the balance of the unity mm. so that they can move forward. But that does not give authority to you to always pursue of authority or mm. to want to impose your own understanding and knowledge in authority. Because as I keep telling people, if you don't like the way ministry is going because you have a fervent calling, go and start your own. Take permission from the pastor, let him bless you. Mm. And you go because you see, this world is filled with more, greater than 5 billion people that everybody is struggling to reach. Mm. Christianity is moving at a fast pace. The, the enemy is also moving at a fast pace. So why do we sit down struggling, fighting, quarreling, and making amends when we are supposed to be moving forward? Praise God. Hallelujah. The word of God encourages believers to speak to their neighbors in love about their sin, to reprove them, not to judge them, rather reprove them to correction, lest they are destroyed or destroys themselves. You see, you mm. cannot rebuke or reprove somebody if you yourself do not have the feeling that you can make mistake. Mm. If you are self-righteous, if you are all correct, you see, you are only seeing yourself through a very narrow mirror. Last two weeks, we were talking about um, characters in somebody, characters in a person, building up characters and things like that. And by the time I heard everything and I was trying to, you know, assimilate what was being taught, 
I only just told myself that character cannot be a confirmation from myself. Mm. Character is expressions that people see about you. Wow. Write about you, observe about you, document about you, either by your interaction and your dealings with them and giving it to you to proofread. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, it says, the, the part B says, after we have loved our neighbor, you love your brother to the extent that you see him falling, you see him be making mistakes, you want to correct him. And bear in mind, correcting each other goes beyond the fact that you're correcting them because of one notorious sin or one to something mm. that we have done that we used to ostracize them from church. Mm. 20 years ago, we I, I must have noticed that, yes, the church was very fast as ostracizing people. If you mm. just do this, ah, if you just do that, they will just ostracize you. Mm. After 15 years, the same people that were ostracized have repented and have started building their ministry and ministry is moving. Wow. The ones that ostracize them, nobody hears of them again. Mm. You see, sometimes these, some, these things will help you, help us as individuals know how to manage, manage, the word is manage, manage disunity for yeah. the progress of the church. Mm. And a lot of disunity that we have in church is because we do not shift boundaries as individuals. Everybody wants to stand on his own ground and you feel that you are boss. We have all heard from God. So why are you telling us that God said when everybody has heard from God? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Throw, the B part says, throw arrows of light, Psalm 141. If anybody is there, verse 5. Throw yeah. arrows of light. Psalm 141. 141, verse 5. I want a sister to read for us. Please, bear, don't take it that I'm... Uh, making feminine yeah. more anything. Yes, I need okay, to go yes praise God. Uh, sorry, please. I'm 141. Yeah. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness, and let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head. Mm. But yet my prayer also shall be in their calamity. Just verse, verse 5. 141 verse 5. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. 141 verse 5, please. No, she's okay. She has read it. Okay, I think somebody very close to the mic should read for us, please. If you are close to your phone. If you are close to your yeah. phone, please read. Sister Susie just read that, but well, I don't think our teacher had him. Says, we want a sister. We, they want we? A, you are a sister. Uh, we need a sister. So oh, sister. That's sister Paul. Let the righteous <laughs> smite me. <laughs> Let the righteous smite me. Yes, it shall be a kindness, and let him prove me. It shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head, for my prayer also shall be in their calamity. Praise God. You see, one of the things you we learn in aspects of um, reproof and rebuke is the fact that there was something that David did. He said, he prayed to God and said, Lord, don't let me fall into the hands of the, my enemy. If you want to chastise me, let me fall into your hands so that you will chastise me. At least I can bear your own chastisement. Mm. That is the same thing that happens that we should have our mindset when we have offended and the church is trying to correct us or elders of the church are trying to correct us. Because you see, these are people that are either advanced in age or have a better understanding of some of the things of the world. There are so many things that I have not seen. There are so many things that you have not seen, no matter how you good and advanced you are. But there is somebody that has seen something about something. Mm. So we'll make use of that person's knowledge and understanding. But then it will not be so hard on us as a person, no matter your offense. Then that is where it uh, will, that is where understanding comes in. And you see, for this particular aspect, we want to look at the life of Paul. He was initially Saul, you know, going around, that you can see in Acts chapter 9, from verse 1 to 16, was going around persecuting Christians, killing them, 
his mindset was that he was doing what? He was doing a good work, stopping these blasphemous people until the light that came from God himself shone upon his, you know, his soul mm. and made him repent. In other words, you can be desperately doing something wrong with the mindset that you are moving the church forward. Mm. With all your zeal, with all your excitement, you are doing it. Yes, it is good. But people are complaining. People are telling pastor. People are telling brethren. This brother, let's sit him down and talk, talk to him and help him understand, it, understand what is going on. Mm. But you see, it takes humility. It takes humility to be able to listen to people. You see, if you have been in a church where there is disunity, where there is fight, there is no way the fire of God will move. Just forget it. Mm. There is no way. And if you are a person that you go around sowing seeds, sowing seeds of discord. Um, this morning, me and my wife were listening to a message. And it was interesting because one of the things that we got from the message is that people go around you know, um, I don't know how to put it. But you go to collect prayers here and there. Ah, pastor, pray for me. This person, pray for me. Prophet, see my vision. Ah, ah. You are just sharing. Prayer, 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 prayer collectors. Forgive. You see, it only shows that you don't have the mindset to follow the ministry that God has put you under. I'm not mm. saying you should not do that. I'm not saying you should not go. But if at every point in time, you cannot sit down and believe in the prophet that God has sent you and believe in his calling and believe in his ministry. It's going to take you time to ever settle down to believe in any other ministry that you are roaming around mm. looking for. Because me after me five me. years, every ministry don't after five years. Somebody, 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 somebody is trying to say something. Oh, just, just for you and Pastor Bayer, maybe you can talk about spiritual adultery. Ah, okay, yeah. Ahead, okay, um, let's move ahead. So, and, 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 hold on, Dr. Bina. And honestly, funnily enough, Dr. Bracken, yes, Dr. Aki, too. Yeah, because you're a mathematician, so you're a doctor. So, uh, you know, like I was sharing with you, um, when I was going to uh, work last night, I was listening to the message that uh, Prophet Sadu was preaching. And in fact, he actually mentioned specifically the word that Bracken used, talking about spiritual adultery. When you begin to love or serve and jump from one place to the other, it is a spiritual adultery. When you don't stay and focus on the one that God has committed into your own hand, it is a spiritual adultery. You love other ministry, you love other pastors. You bring me on, Susie. You love other pastors more than your own church, more than your own ministry, where God has placed you, God has planted you. You are in spiritual adultery. You don't believe in the vision of the church where God has planted you. You are in spiritual adultery. And we have to repent because these things, they gender strife, like Dr. Obina said. They, they, they gender strife, the source seed of this God. And sometimes I look at people, it's like, it's like a, you see, this is how the church operates. It's like a wife praising another man instead of praising his own husband. So, uh, then you see uh, Mr. So so and so, the way he used to take care of his own wife. <laughs> there are no people like you. And people don't know what people do, that people sacrifice for their own church, for their own family to be good. And I give you a story and then I hand you back to Dr. Bina. A man, a man had three wives. All these three wives, they are always fighting. When the man tried to talk to them, they will insult him. And then they used to have a community meeting. So in this community meeting, they rotate the meeting from one person's house to another person's house. So one day, this man, the meeting was in his own house. He called his three wives. He went to them in the room one by one. He said, Mama Shagun, community meeting is going to be in our household. Please, when people come, try to respect me. I, I can call when I say, go and bring water. And you are slow. I said, you, what is wrong with you? You, this foolish woman. Run. He said, don't say yes, sir. He went to his second wife. He said, I will call you to go and bring the soda. If I abuse you, please don't abuse me. When everybody has gone, he said the same thing to the third wife. When everybody has gone, 
you cannot fight me. But in the presence of everybody, make me appear I'm in control of my house. He begged each one of the wives, prostrated for them in his room one by one. The day of the meeting came. Everybody was looking at this woman. He will call the first one. Mama said, No sense, stupid one. Run there. The mama said, Yes, yeah, sir, daddy. He will call eh, Mama Risi. Eh, that one too will run. He said, Yes, sir. Then he will call Mama Cynthia. Run. Eh, everybody said, Yes, sir. Everything. At the end of the whole thing, everybody was saying, Wow, this man is a good man. Can he imagine how he controls his own family? All his three wives were respecting him. Then there was another man. There three wives. He saw how this man controlled his wife. His wife was respecting him. Then he got home. He didn't know what the man did in the secret. He called his three wife. He said, show you people. You foolish women. Show you are there at the, <laughs> you are there at the meeting. You saw that man. When he called his wife, they will answer. The next meeting is in our household. If you people like, don't make your head to the space. When I call you, you'll be misbehaving. Then the day of the meeting came. When he called the first one, they will answer, yes, sir. When he called the second one, they will answer, yes, sir. He called the top one, the real side, yes, sir. The first time when he misbehaved, the, the wife fled up. He said, foolish man. He threw the whole thing. The whole people were saying, hey, the man was embarrassed. Then, how come my friend had three wives? He was successful in managing his three wives. How come I was not able to manage my own? The wife said, what did you, what did you do before the meeting? He said, I didn't do anything. I told them that they should see how you are controlling your family and all your wife were respecting you. Uh, the man said, Mr. Man, you're a foolish man, no. I prostrated them for each of these wives one by one before we had the, <laughs> the meeting. I begged them so that they were address me and respect me. The same thing, you do know those other churches, those other places you, you are jumping to. They are sacrificing, doing things in the secret. So they come on the stage, they appear to be holy. They appear to be perfect. But you, you think your own church is not perfect. And that is why you see people like Bracky said, jumping from one place to the other. You got to make your own grace too. How do you make your own grace too? You got to love what you are doing. Believe in the vision. Believe in your house. Believe in your pastor. Believe where you are. Even if there's anything that is not good, you can pray about it and it's going to be good. So I'm, I'm trusting God as I hand over back to Dr. Ubina. Uh, <laughs> so somebody said, okay, some of us, when your pastor is preaching, like, not that we are doing this Bible study, you're not going to share anything. Back in, you will not share this platform. It's part of the sin we are talking about. It's part of the iniquity. You will not make comments. You will not write comments. You cannot comment on other people's platform. You will not write on your own church platform. You will share other people's video. You will share their... Uh, yeah, so if you are there, you are guilty. Don't be the person I'm talking about. I'm not mentioning anybody's name, but you know yourself. You know yourself. <laughs> so if you, from today, I am preaching on Brother Keys, teaching on Apostle Paul or Sheu or Dr. Bina, and they are saying something, you are not writing comment. Oh, we are watching you. We know you. We are not knowing you. We are not those who are for this house and those who are not for us. Uh, you have to repent. Make your church look good. Make your church look great. Okay, Dr. Bina is preaching. Now, I'm not seeing some of you writing comments. But if it is one prophet there from Karen and Modia, you write comment. Can't you say Dr. Bina is powerful? Dr. Bina is good teaching. Dr. Bina Brother King. Okay, like now, somebody should write. Brother King, that's a good one. Spiritual doctor. Somebody should write. I'm watching the comments now. Write. If you don't write, you're a sinner. You need to repent. You are a sinner. You don't, you don't believe in your own church. How is your church going to be great? You gotta make your church great. You can say nice thing about me as your pastor. Say nice thing about Brother K, Dr. Bina. Say nice thing about my wife. Say, Mommy, you are beautiful. Mommy, you are wonderful. Mommy, finish preaching. Bring money. Say, Mommy, I'm, I'm so blessed today. Take money, buy minerals. Daddy, go and buy me something. Look, I like but don't be, giving me, don't be giving me money for Starbucks all the, all, all the time. It's only Starbucks I need to buy something that will make me happy. To know that we are growing. Because me too, I'll be happy to pray for you. Just don't, be now, don't let me take it back to you. You are the teacher. I'm just a supporter. <laughs> Praise God. Praise Mommy, God. Thank you for laughing. Mommy, God, for like, I see you. The, Sister Angela, thank you. Yes, go ahead. Dr. Bina, back to you. Okay. Praise God. And uh, thank you, Pastor, you. for that uh, illustration. Now, I, we are still talking about throwing arrows of light. Yes, sir. And part of the obstacle and what brought insight to Paul was an impactation he had when he was, his name was Saul. And that impactation helped him to humble himself, to learn a new 
religion, let me put it that way, a new way of life, different from what he used to know. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we bring this into our own Christendom, our own little community? You see, you may have been doing things the way you like, you may have been moving, it has been going well for you, but by the fact that you are under a certain authority, you are under certain supervision, it may yeah. be the choir leader, it may be the pastor, it may be the technical unit leader, it doesn't matter, you are under authority, you are under people that have been given an assignment to make sure the group works well. The onus is on you to respect them. Even if you have a contrary vision, even if you have a contrary view, listen to them, share, share your, your own aspect of them, but don't be like the council of Aritofel that you want to kill yourself because people did not accept what you are mm. saying. Mm. No, there, there, there are reasons why they don't accept it at that time. Give it some days. Maybe they will accept as a result of um, certain things or as a result of knowledge. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it's important you understand this because you see, if you are in a haste, that you want to do this thing. You want to move this mountain. Ah, Pastor, we should evangelize the whole of San Jose. We need to move by your power and everything, which is good. But by the time you go around and rather than winning souls, the cops are winning you. Mm. It's gonna take away and distract the church because there is a rule in the land. You Need, you don't just loiter around because you have a over uh, your your ministry is moving. There is a process, and if we were so we were so zealous as people, we had the power, we had everything. You know, we would have continued service all throughout this period of COVID. Mm. But let me ask you: if we had continued, perhaps it would just be me and Pastor, or only Pastor, or mm. only me, because at a stage. Either that the cops will come and round us up, or even you will call nine, uh, 124 and inform <laughs> them that these people are holding service somewhere. Praise God. Hallelujah. So what I'm saying is, irrespective of the vision that God is giving you as a person, mm. irrespective of the direction that God is leading you as an apostle, as a prophet, as a teacher, as a pastor, within the fivefold ministry, all these ministries they are all so subject to the leader. Let the leader know, ah, this is my vision. This is what God is laying in my heart. Can you direct me? And because most of us, we don't even give opportunity for one-on-one -on -one discussion. We don't even want to listen. We don't want to discuss. We don't want to put whatever uh, grace that God is giving us. We don't, we, we just know, believe we know it all. That is what brings about unteachable spirit. Mm. And the first thing that the Lord desires to destroy in the heart of Saul was the unteachability in him to bring him to the level that he has to learn. And you see, he was so uh, he was so overtaken with the fact that he, he started learning and learning and learning and even knew so much, more than all the apostles that have been with Jesus themselves. Mm. Mm. So imagine if God had not humbled him and brought him to the level that God wanted him to. Praise God. Hallelujah. I hope this is ministering to somebody. I yes, remember sir. when, when uh, Paul was ministering and a prophet came and said, this cloak that I'm tying around my neck is what is going to be used to chain you mm. when you go to stand in the, in, in the presence of the king. You see? He would have listened and said, oh, okay, let's postpone, let's do this, let's look for some other means so that the ministry will move. But that aspect in him that is fire, fire, word for word, mm. he took it even to the front of uh, the um, Agrippa and the rest of them. And he told them their life history from beginning to end, thinking that even Agrippa would say, oh, you, you, you think you want to convert me to a Christian? See, we need to be humble to learn from God at every stage. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that is, why, that is why this is important. 
You see, at every stage, because now we are still five by five, six by six, ten by ten, we're still a growing church. A stage will come that pastor will not even have time to listen to your complaint. But we pray that, Pastor, you still have time to listen to everybody's complaint. That is our <laughs> prayer in Jesus' name. Let's not go Amen. too far. Amen. All right. So the problem is you can have less than five minutes. Um, we stop at point B. We will continue next week from point C. So, yeah, go ahead. Okay. When God corrects us, it is with the intention of shining his light of truth into the darkness of our errors, sins, and unrighteousness. This is why the intent, this is, this is only the intention to bring us back into the truth and life of God. Mm. When we confront our neighbors or fellow believers with the mind of rebuking and reproving mm -hmm. them, it must be with the intention of throwing arrows of light that will bring godly sorrow, repentance, and change. Why mm. do we even correct people? Are we correcting people because we want to let them know that we know so much about God? Or are we correcting them because we have a genuine desire to see God's purpose fulfilled in their life? Or are we correcting them to show them that we are superior? Mm. The abundance of knowledge is resting mm. upon our head. We have studied scriptures mm. so much. Mm. Mm. Why do we really correct people? You see, certain times we just want to we, we shoot all the scriptures. Ah, and everybody is, is shaking, shaking because you have fluency of scriptures and everything. And nobody wants to correct you. Nobody mm. wants to talk to you. You see, when people don't tell you this thing you are doing is good, destruction mm. is knocking very just close to your door. Mercy, mercy. And I don't want to get to a stage that somebody will not sit me down and say, see, bro, this thing you are mm. doing, this thing mm. you are doing, that thing mm. you are doing. I don't want to get mm. to that stage. Because perhaps the opportunity that people will have to correct you may never be there. Mm. You may never be there oh, because messy. you may grow with so much knowledge, so much understanding of God, and people are looking at you far above from on high. And it becomes difficult for people to interact with you, people to tell you simple things Messy. that are humanly possible, are humanly good. I give you an instance, a brother friend of mine while growing up, he was so holiness conscious and everything that he was so lost out of touch with this world. Mm. And I told him at that time that, see, you see, while you are doing all these things, is because God has not blessed you. Mercy. By the time God blesses you and hammers you with blessing, mm. we will be looking for you in faith. Mm. All your ministry, all your scriptures, everything will change. Mm. Uh, you say, uh, you don't know, no, you know. Put all the scriptures and everything to help us understand that holiness is flowing. Mm. Immediately, the, the brother left left school and got a job. He got a job with Shell, and they hammered. You know when they hammered your bank account. Somebody in the kitchen, can you mute yourself? Praise God. Let me drink coffee. Excellency, can you mute yourself? You see? Who, well, who is that? Sorry, they say it's not excellency. Mute yourself. We are hearing your discussion. Praise God. Hallelujah. You see, while we are still at this level, understanding the basic and the little things <clears throat> that God is helping us to understand. Yeah. When the Lord blesses you with a disruptive, um, how would I call it? It used to be destructive technology those days. Mm. I don't know what it is now. But in ministry, when God blesses you with power that is from on high, mm. in a dimension that all of us cannot understand, mm. how humble are, are you going to be that even your brethren will still be able to approach you? Mm. Thank you. How humble are you still going to go? Perhaps the Lord showers so much blessings on you financially. Mm. You see, ministry becomes difficult. Even gathering of brethren becomes difficult. So Thank at this stage that we are still growing, as I'm rounding up, yeah. the essence of rebuke and reproof is not because we want uh, the church wants to sack you, the, mm. the church wants to make a disgrace of you, mm. and 
that is one of the things that pastor always says in church. Whatever we say in church stays in church. It's not because um, um, we, we don't want everybody to know. We want to protect the integrity of the church so that the church yep. can be pruned. The word is pruned. Mm. When, when you sow a seed and it's growing and it's not growing the way you want, you prune it so that it, the shape will come the way all the leaves and the branches will be able to yes, absorb sir. direct sunlight. And that is what the ministry of the pastor is. Not as easy as, or let me not use the word easy. The ministry of the apostle, he can speak the word. He doesn't care if you repent, you don't repent. He tell you that the Lord is going to send fire and blah, blah, blah. But the pastor's work, he guides you as a sheep. He leads you. He takes you as he's going. When you make correction, he will still part you and he will drag you back and bring you closer to him. The ministry Amen. of the prophet, he will say your future, your past, your present, and to come. He's not disturbed about what your reactions are. Yeah. And we need all these fivefold ministries to move. The teacher will teach you God's word from beginning to end, mm. but he may not be patient for you with you to repent. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. So when things happen in church, we will get to the other stages as I round up. This is just the next one is going to be a reproof with wisdom. There are certain elders and people of understanding in the church that may be called to intercede pertaining your issue. And let me tell you this interesting thing, if you don't know. You see, it's only in the church that people, um, a council or a meeting is called because they want to make corrections with you. In your workplace, when the council or a meeting is called one, two, three times, that's the end of it. Nobody is interested in listening again. Mm. It is only in the church that people will sit down because they want the genuineness of repentance. They want the genuineness of growth. They want the genuineness of um, God's grace upon your life. In the secular world, after two, three, they will just send a letter to you. And COVID time now, everybody's looking for reasons to send letters to everybody. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Obina. God bless you. Let's put on together for the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. wow. Dr. Obina. Oh, I said, let's clap. If you are not clapping for Dr. Obina, in, in spite of what we are saying, you is mean that you are still not uh, uh, listening. You are not getting the teaching. And uh, before we round up, uh, Dr. Obina, thank you. Because somebody said, I love what Sister Barbara said here. He said, it takes humility to listen. And it takes humility to accept correction. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, Mommy Angela, what a wonderful study. Mommy Comfort, well spoken, sir. Uh, brother, uh, my wife, Mommy, said, Brother King, that's a good one. Spiritual adultery, mercy. I repent, repent, repent. Some people are not, they are only watching. They are not commenting. I see some people, they just want to watch it. You are not coming. If, if, if your brother is preaching or your husband or your wife, you need to make some good comment. You you need to uh, you need to make it my husband, my brother. You are doing great things. God bless you. Somebody, mommy Elizabeth said um, that was a wonderful message. Brother Jay Wise, wonderful message. Somebody said, love your neighbor. Yo, hallelujah. Mommy, mommy Tony and me said um, we need to be humble to learn from God at every stage. God bless you. Ah, brother Jay Wise, awesome teaching, mommy Elizabeth. Elizabeth, that's right. God bless you, Sister BC. Great teaching. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, Brother Emmanuel. I, I, I can't see that. Yes, let me see that. Somebody, another Emmanuel. Uh, uh, yes, Brother Emmanuel Tambo. He said, Proverb 3 5. Humility. We must be ready for correction and learning. Socrates says, all I know is that I know nothing. Hey, oh my God, I like this brother. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to copy brother Emmanuel Tambuz. He says, Socrates says, all I know is that I know nothing. So it, it's open our understanding for correction, for wisdom from the man of God. So when you understand that you, all you know, you don't know nothing. Whatever you think you know is nothing. Because when God begins to open your eyes and bring you to other people, then you know that you don't know nothing. 
So Apostle so Paul said, we understand in part and we prophesy in part. So we have come to the end of this whole uh, teaching for today. We did not finish part two where Dr. Obina is going to continue next week. And in between, I'll be able to bring some clips and show you and we listen. And then we know that we are in the right direction. And I trust God by the time we are coming back after COVID-19, we'll be stronger, we'll be better as a church, we'll be more anointed. The presence of God will flow among us in the name of Jesus. So thank you to all our teachers for tonight, Brother King, Brother Dr. Bina, God bless you. We appreciate you all. All the people who have contributed, Brother Shion, Brother Paul, God bless you. And Brother Boris, God bless you. God bless you. We love you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord watch over you in Jesus' name. Don't forget to give your offering online and your time, whatever you want to give. And the Lord will bless you and the Lord will increase you. God bless you. Shall we share the grace together? Make sure you share this message. It's a good message. Somebody say it's a good message. Good good message. Message. I, I can't unmute uh, yourself. Somebody um, say it's a good message. Somebody says a good and fantastic message. Somebody say, Brother King, well done. My wife too well done. If you don't greet me, I greet myself. When the lizard fell down from ground. He looked around, nobody was praising him. The reason I raised it up like this. You know what you are saying? If you don't praise me, I praise myself. If you don't praise me, I praise my ah, God bless you in Jesus' name. Shall Amen. we share the grace together? I want to go. May the, the grace, grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the love of the Lord, Lord God, and the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Now and forevermore. forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, goodness, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell, we shall dwell in, the in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Forever and ever. And ever. Amen. 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 God bless you, all those of you who have contributed online. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much. We love you. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful rest of the week. We'll be in church on Sunday online, and we continue the series we started on Sunday. Several people you will meet on the journey of your life. God bless you. Have God a wonderful you, night. Shalom, shalom, shalom. We love you. Bless we appreciate you, you all. You, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you all. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. God bless you. We appreciate seeing you all. God bless you. We love you. We love you. God bless you. All the people who may comment. God bless you, sister. Yes, God bless you. God static, bless are you, you are you static or you are moving? <clears throat> okay, now you are moving now. Okay, I can see you. All right, okay. God bless you. Your excellency. God bless you all. We we love you. We appreciate you. God bless you, brother Jeb Wise, brother Paul, the keyboardist. Thank you. You are your corner office. I can see you there. The 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 Abutus, uh, the Fala Jews. God bless you all. God bless you. Thank you. The Lord keep you and the Lord bless you. Have a wonderful um, rest of the night and the Lord keep you. Sister BC, God bless you and the entire Matthews. Uh, the Lord bless you. Shalom. Amen. The brow, yes, Amen. The, the last. God bless you. Yes, I can see you. Chioma, God bless you. Yes, 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 yes. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you. Thank you. Ah, okay. so I, 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 didn't see, I didn't see your face <laughs> and I didn't see your comment. <laughs> yes, there are some people. God, 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 God bless you. God bless you, Pastor. Yes, I can see those people. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Shalom. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful night. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Thank you. God bless you all.